Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. This one's going to be about how to make a Roblox thumbnail. Uh, the last video did really good and it was a Roblox banner, so I'm going to make a Roblox thumbnail. I'm sure a lot of you guys will find this useful, so let's get started. Alright, as always, you want to start by making a new project by going up to File new and you want the dimensions to be 1280 by 720 which is the size of a youtube thumbnail and you can name it whatever you'd like after that just hit create all right so at this point you want to find a background for your image and you can either find one online like i did here by searching up roblox background or you could take a screenshot of your roblox game by using the snipping tool clicking new and just dragging and file saving it but i'm sure you know how to do that and then once you have it on your computer just go to your file explorer find the image somewhere and just hold left click and drag it into your project but i'm going to be using one from online which is this one right here so i'm going to right click on that one copy the image and bring it and control v to paste it or you can save it to your computer and bring it in it's up to you so we have a really cool image here it's going to make it fit the project by using edit free transform you can edit the size of the image if you hold control you can warp it like this i don't know why you would ever do that but you can do it so that's cool and once you have your image positioned the way you want it just go up here to hit the check mark hit confirm and you're good to get started on the next part all right for the next part we're going to find an image for the character and if you already have a screenshot just bring it into your photo p if you don't you can look up roblox character png and you can get some transparent ones but if you want to use your own character i'll show you how to do that right now so i'm going to bring in the image and you can do this if it's your own image bring it into photo p go to the zoom tool so you can zoom in on them get pretty close so you can see the entirety of them and now we're ready to start cutting him out okay so we want to start by going up to the lasso tool on the top left you can right click it and choose whichever one you want I think I'm gonna go with the polygonal as usual left click on that and now you're ready to start selecting around the entire body by left clicking and you see there's a little arrow or line I mean that sticks straight out basically every time you click it stops and makes a new marker so you can just keep going around keep clicking until you get all the way around the body now it doesn't have to be perfect but make it good enough to where it doesn't look bad like I'm going pretty fast and it's it's alright but I'm gonna just try to do this quickly the hardest parts are probably the curved edges for obvious reasons you have to click multiple times Luckily, the character is not exactly um, round, so it's easy to get around these straight edges. Oh gosh, uh oh, what happened? What happened? Okay, great. Completely messed up, so don't hit Control Z. That will completely ruin your progress. Just like what happened to me, so that's great. Anyways, you know what to do. Do that all the way around, and I'll get back to you when I'm close to finishing it. Also guys, don't forget that if you mess up, just hit delete one time or two times or however many you need to go back to go back not control Z like I thought also you can scroll up and down if you're zoomed in too close all right so I hope this doesn't mess up well okay don't click delete but I forgot to show you guys what to do so just connect your line to the starting line, the very start of it. When you say you have it right here, you just want to click straight on it. And it will connect and form a dotted line. Which means you did it. Congratulations. You're ready to move on. You just want to hit Control C and Control V. And now you could just completely hide the layer of the screenshot by clicking the I or clicking delete. And here is our character. Let's go. Honestly, doesn't look that bad. Yours might look pretty bad, but that's all right because you'll learn and you'll get better at it. So here's my, my dude, right? He's a pirate. 
pretty sick. Um, I can zoom out. And really, you can move them anywhere you want. Do uh, what, the, what the, the. So here he is. Edit, free transform. You can uh, shape shift them, make him a uh, absolute giant, or you can make him a uh, little tiny, little tiny guy. I'm gonna make him a uh, reasonable size. But for the thumbnail, I'm gonna make him pretty big, actually. Okay, nice progress actually i'm gonna move him on this side okay cool now we're ready to start adding some text all right now we are ready for the text this is probably my favorite part in making thumbnails so you just want to start by going over to the little text tool right here which is a t clicking on that going anywhere on your canvas and left clicking again and you'll see a little line that means that's where your text will start up here is your size and you can change how big it is and you can see the line gets smaller or bigger depending on which way you go or if you want to make it even bigger you could type in your own number like 200 but i'm going to go back to 150 which is the max on the scroller thing and i'm going to type in uh i'll do crazy pirate now it's a little too big so what do we need to do we need to either select the whole thing and change the size or another way is to go up to edit free transform and you can adjust it this way and by holding shift you can make it get bigger without like completely warping it so i'll do crazy pirate right here and then I'm going to duplicate this layer by right clicking on it, duplicating it and bringing the duplicate down. And I'll just do crazy pirate in Roblox. I don't really know what kind of video this would be, but it would definitely be an interesting one. Okay. Once you got your text good like this, you're ready to change the font. So go to the text tool, highlight this. Up here is where you can choose your font. There's tons of free ones that you can use. Okay, so I'm gonna go with the font Bangers. It's honestly a decent looking one. It looks like this. And in Roblox, I'm gonna change that font too. Gotta make sure I'm selecting it. If you only select part of it, just hit Control A to select the whole thing. And I'm gonna find, you can either choose a different font or the same one. I guess I'll choose the same one just because I can. And I'm going to change the size to like 200. That's a little too big. We'll go with 180. Actually, let's go with 170. All right, that should be fine. Okay, so here it is. Looks pretty cool. Okay, now the best part, we're going to change the way the text looks. So you can start by left clicking on one of the text layers and it opens the layer style menu. So this is where the fun begins. I'm going to start by going to gradient overlay, checking the box. And mine's green because I changed it, but you can click on the color box and you can see the two different colors, the black and the green. Double click on those boxes to change the color. I'm going to go with green though. These are the settings. They should be the same. You can copy them if they're not. Now I'm going to go to inner glow, check the box. The color by default is this gross looking yellow. I'm going to change it to white and I'm going to change the blend mode to normal. Turn the opacity up and the spread and size is up to you. I'm actually going to change the color back to green like this, but I might do a darker green like that. Looks pretty decent. So now I'm going to go to drop shadow and you can copy these settings or you can just follow along. I'm going to change the blend mode to normal, which it already is. I'm going to change the color to a dark green, which is nearly black, but it's not. I'm going to change the angle to 90 and I'm going to change the size the distance to about seven, the size to five, spread to 100. So just copy these if you don't have them. Hit okay. 
Now I'm gonna go to my other text and do the same thing. So it should save all the settings from the last one. So if you just check the boxes that we used, gradient, there it is. Inner glow, boom, there it is, drop shadow. So there it is. Now we're ready for the next part. Okay, so right click on both of them and do convert to smart object, convert to smart object. Once you do this, you cannot go back. So just know that. Now I'm gonna double click on one of them, click stroke. I'm gonna do white stroke with a size of five. I'm gonna click the drop shadow again, but this time I'm going to turn the distance up a little bit and possibly the size. Yeah, so these are the settings. Just hit okay. And do the same for the other. So stroke and drop shadow. Now they're colliding, so we're going to move this one up a little bit more. Also, we're gonna add another drop shadow. So click on one of the texts again. Click the little plus sign right here to make another drop shadow. But this time we're gonna to go to multiply and change the color to black. And so you, you see it right down here and turn the spread down. So it looks like an actual shadow. And just adjust it accordingly. I'm gonna hit okay, do the same for the other. Change the color to black, blend mode, multiply. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna leave that. There we go, it's looking pretty good so far. Now we're gonna make the character look pretty cool. I'm gonna double click on the character layer. And now I can add whatever I want to them. I can add a stroke, a drop shadow, color overlay. I can even add a gradient overlay and just make it multiply. So he's green, but I'm not going to do that. I can add, I think a stroke would look good and a drop shadow, but I'm gonna change some things about it like that. And I can maybe add an outer glow. I might be able to get away with that, but probably not. Change the blend mode to normal, the opacity up to 100. Spread in size, and I could change the color to green. Yeah, it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to get away with that. I could do white, I guess. Make him look like something, I don't know. But yeah, you can do whatever you want to him. Now I'm going to change the background a little bit, so I'm gonna click on the background layer. I'm gonna go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I looked that one up. That's how you pronounce it, I think. Click it and you can see you can adjust the blurriness of it. So I'm gonna do it just enough to where you could see both the background and everything else. So like this, it's looking pretty good but the background just kind of offsets it. So double click on the background layer, go to gradient overlay. And now you can change the colors to green or whatever you want. And then just go to blend mode, multiply. And you could turn the opacity to make it not as green, but I'm going to go to radial and adjust it like that. Okay, now just hit okay. We're going to go up to image. Make sure you have your background layer selected. Go to image, adjustments, brightness, and contrast. Right here. And you can turn them up until it looks good. That looks pretty good. Go to image, adjustments, vibrance. Turn this up. Looks good. Okay. I'm trying to figure out a spot to put this guy. I guess right there is good. Okay, now I'm going to add a border around the image. So you wanna to go to your rectangle tool down here, left click on it, change the fill to black, and just draw some rectangles. Once you make one, you can duplicate it and bring it to the other side. Uh oh. Okay, and then you're gonna have to make new ones for the bottom and top. 
Just try to keep them the same size. Make them connect as well. Man, that's kind of tough. I'm not gonna lie. Because it keeps snapping everything. Now, if you get it and it's like not the right size, that's totally fine. Just click on that layer, go to edit, free transform, and you can pull it whatever way you want like that. So now I'm going to duplicate this, bring it up to the top. And now we have our border. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to click on the very top one. We're going to actually drag them all to the top. So they're all next to each other. Click the top one, hold shift, then click the bottom. So they're all selected. So I'm going to merge the layers. So now they're all one. I'm going to double click on it change the color overlay to white and then from here just hit ok right click on that layer and click convert to smart object double click on that layer change the blend mode to I think it was color dodge but turn the opacity down so it doesn't look as crazy so it gives it a cool little look to it so now that you're done, all you want to do is go up to file, export as, and either a PNG or JPEG. I'll just do PNG. And make sure the quality is all the way at 100. And just hit save. And it's right here. Um, so I hope this helped you guys. If it did, leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.